Hey, it's James from Food and Electrical, and on today's video, this is the smallest EIC I've uh, going. Look at it, it's two bedrooms. Let's get into this. And an ensuite. I am in the heart of York, and we have all these lovely back of the main properties we've got a little a little beer garden out here so if you live here whoever's going to be renting this one out look at that your pub's just there you can just hop over the wall and land in your front garden yeah it's lovely so literally this is right in the middle of the town you've got like a little restaurant here so you can watch people eat <laughs> but yeah you've just got like a little uh i don't know sofa little tv and that and then your kitchenette thing and then over here you've got your, your bedroom what more do you want and a little bathroom and that so that'd be great for students, I bet it cost a fortune this. Cause it's right in the middle of York. I bet this is over a grand a month just for two little forky little rooms. But yeah, that's uh, that's how you get in this property. So let's get into testing then. So what we're gonna do is test everything. So first thing is first, obviously. First is always first. And we're gonna actually do a visual test then. So I'll just turn these heaters on just to see if they're actually working. Cause it's always, to give a, even though that's not part of the test, as long as it's earth and we're getting good readings, it doesn't really matter. But it allows for the elements to expand, so if there is any issues, the insulation resistance will know about it. Um, but I've just noticed, look at these curtains, it's electric, it's electric uh, heater there, and these curtains just literally touch on it. So yeah, if you come back late, you're cold after going for a pint or whatever, you switch your heater on, look for pass out, these curtains are just going to set on fire and uh, yeah. <laughs> You got yourself a house fire. Yeah, so I think we'll suggest they'll uh, take this down and get some blinds. I think that'll be safe, won't it? But yeah, well, I'll have to tell them about that. The whole point of this testing is uh, to stop fires and electric shocks. That's what we're here to do, is to assess and test and assess the risk. So I know everything's not right. Everything's just it's a landlord special where they've just pitted over the sockets. Um, but yeah, we've got to test everything out then. So we've got a few sockets here. So one, two, three, four, five sockets for the whole that end and then this end you've just got one there we go two oh look at lucky lucky them three flipping out three sockets so what things are we looking for then so we're looking for any cracks it switches or sockets we're looking for any kind of burnt out cabling or singles exposed so sometimes you see it on the on the light bulbs I have got the cat missing there, but sometimes you see at the top, you see the colours hang out where someone's just pulled on it, tried to swing on it. A bit like uh, coming like a wrecking ball, or what's the other one? Chandelier. There we go. They seem fine. But yeah, what else do we what else do we look for with the visuals? So visuals are uh, the cable size in the fuse boards. We'll take that cover off shortly. And we want to make sure that the the breaker protection is going to trip before the cable's rating. So if you've got like a two, like a 2.5 cables as a radial, it's 27 amps, it's on a 32, it's just going to burn and set on fire, don't it, if it goes past that, so you have to check that as well. And there we go, you want to thought this, but you think, oh, fridge, it's plugged in, open the door, and the cable is just getting, <laughs> getting squished in the door, which is not good. So the inner cores can, uh, can basically snap, essentially, and then you get arcing within the cable. So you get that with like women with the hair dryers, they wrap it around, wrap it around, wrap it around, and unwrap it, unwrap it, unwrap it, and it can cause damage within the cable. And then you, the cable on the outside looks fine, but the internals will be knackered. And then yeah, you get arc in between and you get fires, so that's that. And then yeah, look at that. So the socket's being mounted too low down, so as it plugs in, look at that, it's just damaged the, damaged the flex there, which is not good at all. So I'll have to, I uh, suggest that this either gets turned around, which is the cheapest option for the landlord, or we just lift it up a little bit and then it's got room for the flex not to be bent, but also have a hole through the side or bottom. So this uh, appliance's cord can feed through as well without being trapped in the door. Yeah, hello, 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 what have we got here? So we've got some shifty guy walking around my van. I don't know, what's he after? I'll keep an eye out for him, we'll have to come out going, oh, get away. <laughs> Give it Yorkshire uh, tradesman. Uh, oh, well that's what I do then. So what I do is get a picture of the fuse board then, and then we can just sit nice comfortably so it's hanging out of the ceiling. I'm gonna write down the, the circuit details. So it'll be a cooker and a B32, sockets B32, so on, so on, so on. Uh, I can already see then, 
Now this is uh, a main switch and we have no uh, RCA protection on the shower. So that'll need to start in. The uh, cooker's got a socket outlet down below. So yeah, there's a few bits that I'll need. Um, RCD protected, they've got a circuit within the bathroom which will be that tower rail, so that'll need to be RCD protected and so on. So that's the got a picture of the dodgy guy. <laughs> just in case you're robbing me. These aren't connected, so they're just um, spares now. But yeah, so let's get this cracked off then. Yeah, so we're testing the shower now then. So we've got to take in the line cable out and we've connected that to earth. And we've gone to the furthest point. But yeah, sometimes it's a bit, it's a bit grim. When you're doing a bit of testing. Little bugs are knocking about. <laughs> right, let's get this uh, tested then, so it's on continuity. We're at 0 0.10. So, what we're going to do is do an insulation resistance test as well. I'm just going to check that there's no IP issues. It's not really, it's been swapped before and it do not quite match up, but it's okay. It covers and it's sealed around, so jobs are good. Right, we'll get that bob back in then. Yeah, so we also check the isolation connections because it's always like bathroom fitters ends up doing uh, bathroom pull cords most of the time they use like the tiny little screwdriver it's never tight enough and it just sets on fire and we get calling out to fix it so insulation resistance greater than 200 meg at 250 test fault and we've got that's passed so we'll wrap that into the cert and then we'll move on to the next one so yeah when you when you're doing it you just connect up light to earth Go to your end, make sure you've got an earth path all the way around. Make sure everything's earth. If you don't get a reading, it's not earth. Or you've not plugged in your testers properly or whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, um, after that, insulation resistance. Bang, and then if it all passes, bang it back in. Here's is that. Yeah, here's one for you then. So that there would be a fail on the pull cord. So the pull cord thing snaps. So it's what it's supposed to do. It's, it's a piece of plastic like this. You tie off one end of the plastic string. The bottom of the plastic string you tie off as well on the, onto the plastic. So you've got electrical separation. So if you get, you got, if you got wet, essentially this whole string could be wet into the actual pull cords, gubbins where the live and neutral is. And uh, yeah, so you're supposed to have that electrical separation. So if it is steamy and that, and it's really getting really, really wet in there, that it doesn't, it's not like a, you're not just conducting straight into it. So it's got that plastic bit of electrical separation. So, oh, this guy's not happy. <laughs> Look at him. Little red band, it's really hard to get in there. I have to shift it out, but there we go. So you need to, it, we'll have to put that down. Cause I rang uh, Napit about this before. And uh, he had said, yeah, should be on there. So you'll have to swap that pull cord over. There we go, little red van's gone. So, yeah, I'm parking here. I'm working here, so yeah, then we've just got a few things to screw about then. So we've got some tests on the, some lighting circuits, but they're radials. This is a circuit within the bathroom, which is not nicely protected, so that'll need nicely protection along with the lighting, along with the shower. The shower's already nicely protected, can't speak today. Uh, outside light, then we've got indoor cabling. There we go, that's wired it up, so that's going to go nice and crispy in the sun. That's not good, so I'll need a whisker box and then an outdoor rated flex running to it. What else have we got? I've just pulled off a few sockets to check. To be fair, it's an alright install. I think some, well, at, at the time for the RCD protection, it was 2006. Uh, but yeah, everything looks pretty good to be fair. Uh, we've got this with the cupboard door just trapping the cable. Lovely. We've got the vent plugged up. So that'll be da damaging the appliance. Molded plug top. What else we've got? Uh, no RCD protection. Yeah, living room heater then. So, there you go, that's your curtain. Drape it over that, you turn on your heater. There we go, nice crispy tenant. We talked about that earlier. What else we've got? Let's go through these in. Oh yeah, and then just there's some high readings for the sockets. So, in the right side, it was high reading. It was like 0.9, so obviously when you add on your your 0.34 ZE, it's going to tip over the 0.1, no, uh, 1.09 maximum ZS. So if it goes over that number, then it fails. So, but it, like the other side with 0.27, 0.28, it, so it passed if we swap it over. So there's that to do, this to do, 
It's up over because it goes for the high readings. Uh, that one's got a crack in it, slight hairline crack if you look. So if you look there, so sometimes it could be a bit of paint. I would scratch over it, but that's definitely a crack. So that'll just need to swap it over. Oh, nice and easy one, really. Yeah, I thought I'd show you then how we screw back these sockets then, some top tips. So, let's just rest you in this socket. Come and get you in there. Come and get you in, right, you in. So, what I do then, is if not, this video's gonna be very short. So, I don't know, when I were apprentice, I took ages trying to get these, these screws back. So always make sure your screw's slightly longer than the lug that you're putting it into, if you can see that. Can't really say that. But essentially, you've got a, a hole you have to reach in there. That's your hole. You can see that. So you have to you have to make it to that point. So what I do is just make it longer than it needs to be, and then so maybe about by about 10 mil or 20 mil. So I'm going to poke it in the end. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that was a bad example because I didn't even get it in. <laughs> oh. let's, let's get it going a bit. Oh wait, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get my uh, my socket threader because this is uh, this is whoever did it last is knackered it. <laughs> yeah, the screws all the threads all knackered on it, so we've gone for a different screw. So we'll have to swap that out. But yeah, we'll get one side in, get maybe like six six little nudges on it, and yeah, for the other side then one, two, three, four, five, six, and both sides are nicely done. Then and you just tighten up one side just so it's still movable. Then you go for the other side then. That speedy action, and then you line it up with where it was, so I can see where there's the cork around it. So it's gonna have to go in the same place. If not, it'll look a bit funny. And you don't want to over tighten these. So you just want to get it like fingertip tight, and then strain it up so it's vertical. So some people like it horizontal, and some like it vertical, and then that is how you screw it back, and everything's looking nice and tight there. Now you might be thinking anyone could do that. You know, I mean, it looks quite easy, but if you look at me. <laughs> I'm like lead prone on a kitchen top, so I've got a cover like a big cooker at the side of me. Oh, this is not very comfortable. Yeah, and that's it then. So nice, easy one today, really. There's no food segment because we went to Middlesbrough this morning and uh, yeah, just had a little job. When a solicitor's office, you can't really film in there because it's all like special cases and GDPR and all that, you know. Can't be uh, putting people's information out. There we go, Ellis is uh, signing up. Thanks for I'm leaking all my information, James. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, it was just like a burnt out socket, that one. So, officers, the women in the officers, it was getting cold. So, they basically brought in uh, their own heaters, and it's just, an, it's just a single socket with an extension lead plugged in that runs out, and they've got like two, there's maybe five sockets holes so there'll be two for the computer and then they've plugged a heater and another heater in and yeah over the years it's just burnt and melted inside and start to smell but they're like yeah but we're cold we need to plug it in so yeah so i'm actually trying to educate them that you can't plug more than two heaters in really or you shouldn't really be plugging in a, in a heater into an extension lead really um otherwise it's just gonna melt so yeah i showed them the maths <laughs> and said right yeah you, you plug that two kilowatt heater in that two kilowatt heater Four kilowatts, it's only rated at 13 amps, which is three kilowatts. Um, but because it's British standard, and the fuse doesn't actually pop at 13 amps, it'll just carry on running at whatever, 16 amps and just melt. So that's British standards for you. Look at that, this is the narrowest alley I've ever been in. Oh, I'm taking off the wing mirrors. Look Slowly going, slowly goes. Ah! Look at this. Look how close that is. I'll put them in. Alright. Now we're packed up again then. So that's all we've got time for today then. If you like this kind of content then hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the little bell notification so you know when we next upload. As always have a good one from me and I'll see you on the next one. It's raining. Mamma no.